As JavaScript developers, we often have to deal with closures, but have you ever wondered what they actually are behind the scenes? Well, in this video, I'll try to explain just that. But before you watch this one, I highly recommend that you also watch my previous video on execution context and environment records, because I'll just be assuming some basic knowledge in this video. The most important things I wanted you to remember from that video is that a new function execution context gets created whenever we invoke a function and also a new function environment record. And I will not go into that much detail in this video, but long story short, environment records are used to manage the identifier bindings within a certain context. So the variables, parameters, function declarations, and so on. And during the creation phase of the execution context, Memory space is allocated for all these values. And uh, during the execution phase, the execution context is then pushed onto the call stack and the code is executed. Now, after returning from a function, the execution context is removed from the call stack and is eventually garbage collected. Now, normally, so not talking about closures here, but normally it is only the function execution context that holds a reference to the function environment record. So when the function execution context has been garbage collected, there are no other references to this environment record, which is a sign for the garbage collector to then also collect that as garbage. It's also destroyed. So this means that we lose access to these variables, functions, everything within that environment record. But that makes sense because in this case, if outer has finished executing, we no longer have to use this count variable anywhere outside of outer. So it would just be a waste of memory to keep this around. However, it is possible to retain a reference to this function environment record, in which case it does not get garbage collected and we still get to use the variables within outer. And this happens, or the, the first step to make this happen happen is to have a nested function, for example, inner. So in that case, a new inner function object gets created and function objects contain an internal environment property. And this holds a reference to the environment record in which they are defined, which in this case is the outer function environment record. So the inner function objects environment property is a reference to the outer function environment record. So now we have a reference between the inner function object and the outer function environment record. But just having this reference isn't enough because now whenever outer finishes executing, there are no other references to the inner function object. So this also just gets garbage collected. We cannot reference it from anywhere within our code. And this then again leaves that environment record without any references. So this then also gets garbage collected. We show no mercy. So what we need to do is to retain a reference to the inner function object from outside of the outer function. So we need something like this, where we have a variable on, in this case, the global context that references this function object. Well, luckily this is pretty easy to do because we can do this by returning this function object from the outer function and then assigning this value to a variable outside of the outer function. So let's return the inner function declaration from outer. So we're returning the inner declaration. We're not invoking it. Uh, and then we're assigning this value to the inner func variable on the global context. So now whenever inner func gets initialized, outer gets invoked. And whenever outer finishes executing, the global inner func variable still holds a reference to the inner function object. And this inner function object in turn still references the outer environment record through its environment property. So this means that they will not get garbage collected and even the outer environment record gets retained. It does not get destroyed, even though the outer execution context has been destroyed. And this combination of a function object with a retained environment record is called a closure. And the special thing here, or the special thing about closures, is that the environment record is from a function that has already finished executing and the execution context has already been destroyed. So now let's see why this is actually useful. So now whenever we invoke inner func, which we can do because it's just invoking the inner function object, a new function execution context is created for inner as well as a new function environment record. And environment records have an internal property called outer env or outer environment. And this holds the value of the environment property of the function object for which the environment record is created. So in this case, the inner function object's environment property holds a reference to the outer environment record. So also the outer env or outer environment property on the inner environment record holds a reference to the outer environment record. 
And the outer nth property essentially creates a, a linked list or a chain, the scope chain, of environment records. So whenever we try to access an identifier binding within a certain context, the engine first tries to find it within the current environment record. But when it cannot find it in the current one, it checks the environment record that is linked through the outer nth property. So it's going down the scope chain. So in this case, within inner, we have an incremented count variable, but in here, we're also referencing count. There is no binding for count within the inner environment record, so it uses the environment record that outer env references, which in this case is the retained outer environment record. And this does have a binding for count. So because of that closure, we still get to use the count variable, even though outer has already finished executing. To summarize what we just saw, so a closure is a combination of a function object and a retained environment record through its environment property. And then whenever we invoke this closure, this retained outer environment is part of the scope chain. So we still get to access all the variables from that function that has already finished executing. And closures happen whenever we have a nested function, and then we keep a reference to that inner nested function somewhere outside of that outer function. So I'm editing the video now, it's like 2 a.m., but I figured I'm gonna just add a little quiz to see how well I've explained closures. So pause this video and see if you know what gets logged whenever we execute this code. I'm gonna give you one second, but just uh, pause the video and you'll have infinite time. So the right answer is 112, and let's see why. So what I wanted you to see here is that we're working with two closures. So I'll just start at the point where the global execution context has already been pushed onto the call stack and we have the two uninitialized variables for counter one and counter two, and also a function object for the create counter function. So now counter one gets initialized by invoking create counter. And this creates a new function execution context, also with a brand new function environment record. So just skipping to the execution phase, uh, count is now initialized with the number zero, and then we eventually return the increment function from this function. So now counter one holds a reference to this function object. So we have our first closure. And now the exact same thing happens for counter two. So a new function execution context is created with a brand new function environment record. Again, skipping to the execution phase, count now gets uh, initialized with the number zero and we again return the increment function. So now counter2 also holds a reference to this function object. It's also a closure, but notice how they both point to a different environment record through their uh, environment property. So it's important to remember that that outer environment record that the closure points to gets created whenever we invoke this outer function, which we can do multiple times, in which case we create multiple closures. So now whenever we invoke counter1 for the first time, a new function execution context is created with a brand new function environment record whose outer nth property is a reference to the first create counter environment record. So count is now incremented and one gets logged. Now, whenever we invoke counter two for the first time, the exact same thing happens, but now outer nth references that second environment record. So that's still at zero. So count now gets incremented and one gets logged. So you kind of get the gist now, but whenever we invoke counter one again, a new function execution context is created with a new function environment record whose outer nth property is a reference to that first create counter environment record. So this was already at one, so count is now incremented and two gets logged. And that's how we get one, one, two. There are many use cases for closures, but they are excellent to retain state or context between function calls. And this can really help to optimize memory, but also reduce the amount of expensive function calls. So for example, here's a pretty common example with memoization. So inside the memoize function, we've got a cache variable that's just an empty object for now, but eventually we're gonna store some results. We then return a function from the memoize function, so closure. So this means that we're just returning a function object that still holds a reference to the memoize environment record through its environment property. And we then assign this return function to a variable on the global context. So very similar to what we saw before, we now have a closure. So when invoking this return function, new execution context, new environment record, and this environment record then uses the memoize environment record as its outer env. And through this, we still have access to cache. So within the function, we check if the result has already been cached or not, in which case we just return the cached result. And otherwise we invoke this expensive function. So in this case, we used a closure to kind of maintain a, uh, a centralized cache between function calls. But it's also very possible 
to accidentally create a closure over large amounts of data, stale data, a large scope, and so on. So for example, here we have a function and we have a user data variable where we fetch all the users. Now, if we're a little bit successful, this could be tens of thousands or even more users, just a really large object. And from this function, we return an object with a retrieve and an update function. They're arrow functions, but that doesn't matter. They're still just function objects whose environment property is a reference to the create user manager environment record. And this environment record has this large amount of data. So that's not great because we don't want to retain that in memory, especially not because we're not actually using any of this data in the returned functions. But because these function objects still hold a reference to the create user manager environment record, it is still in memory. So that's not great. And we might want to uh, refactor that a little bit. Now, this is, of course, one very simple example. But what I want to show here is that it's very important to understand how functions interact with the surrounding environment records. So it can really help the performance of your app to sometimes check like, hey, do I have an accidental closure with large amounts of data, with a large scope and so on? You might wanna refactor that. I hope this video was at least a little bit useful and that you see that a closure is really just a function object with a reference to a retained environment property, which is then part of the scope whenever we invoke this closure. As always, if you still have any questions, feel free to reach out to me about, thank you so much for watching. Please don't create a closure over large amounts of data and uh, have fun coding.